My name is Sundar Ramalinga and I manage the deep learning practice for NVIDIA India based here out of Bangalore. So uh, I have the opportunity to work with large number of organizations who are deploying uh, AI techniques, machine learning, deep learning and the advanced data analytic techniques for their current workflows and I help them uh, in terms of sizing up the right infrastructure, in terms of uh, deciding which software to use and what is the most efficient way of ensuring that you build an AI first organization. The topic of my talk was uh, building an AI first organization. So today, uh, almost all the companies, irrespective of the sizes, starting from the very smallest company to the big conglomerates in the country, everybody wants to adopt AI in the most efficient and the quickest possible fashion. But the big question is, where do I start? And how do I ensure that whatever I do is the right thing? Because this is such a very new science. It's an nascent thing that has happened in the industry today. So many people need some sort of guidance as to what is the best methodology for me to adopt AI for my organization? In other words, what is the recipe for success? And uh, that's what my talk was focused upon. So what, what we discussed about is, um, we started off with talking a little bit about the technology, how the technology has evolved in the recent times, and, uh, and what, are the, uh, what are all the, you know, uh, uh, this, the success mantras for adopting uh, AI in the quickest possible way from an infrastructure perspective. When I say infrastructure, what I mean is just not the hardware, but also a lot of supporting software that go along with the hardware. So one thing for sure is that AI is going to change our lives in a big way. The way we, we move around, the way we, tra we travel from the office to our home and back, and uh, the, in fact the subjects that our kids are going to study, the way our diseases are going to be diagnosed, uh, the way we are going to shop uh, whatever we want to buy, everything is going to be impacted by AI in a big way. That's a big trend that is happening. The second important technological change that is happening is that uh, in terms of the computational methodologies that have been used, the traditional methodologies are fast getting replaced by what we call as the accelerated computing techniques. Wherein instead of using a large number of uh, heavy computational systems, you end up using a much smaller number of very mm, special devices that are specifically architected and built for AI computing. So that's another big technological shift that is going to happen in the near future. That, in fact, I would say that that has already started and uh, people are adopting it very fast. Well, AI as a service um, will, will certainly flourish. There is no doubt about it. But then uh, I, I would assume that many companies would start off that way, but then in the long run, they would want to adopt it as, as a homegrown technology. That is where, you know, the the strength of the organization lies when you are able to ca when you are capable of developing your own uh, solutions so i mean it's not a bad idea to start off uh, as adopting somebody else's services but then i would assume that in the long run people would look at developing their own in house expertise for developing ai the most important and the very basic uh, prerequisite i would say is, is the ability to, to, to change, to adopt newer technologies. See, it's very interesting. It is not that businesses are suffering today. Businesses are flourishing. They are doing well using the conventional techniques. It's not that people are suffering. But then by adopting the newer technologies, by being open to adopt newer technologies, your entire way of working is going to change for the better. So uh, without being afraid of, of the unknown, the ability to and the openness to adopt a completely new unknown territory is the key for success. Yes. And it has to be top driven. Certainly, um, uh, the management has to have a buy-in of this. And once it becomes the culture of the organization, automatically it permeates all through the organization. So AI does not understand any gender or whatever. AI understands data, period. So if your data that is used to train your AI models is biased towards a gender, then the results also will be biased towards that particular gender. 
is an example. If you are creating recommendation engines for suggesting the right or for recommending the right clothing for for uh, for a community, and if your data contains a large number of uh, uh, women's apparels being used for training your models, then the recommendations also you would find that to be biased towards women. It's as simple as that. So it is the culture of the society that provides the data that determines what type of recommendations or what type of bias, if at all any, you are seeing out of AI outcomes. And AI as such does not have bias. So it is the, the societal change and it is the cultural change that is needed to, to weed away bias and not uh, anything to do with technology. Sure. I mean, first of all, congratulations to the uh, to the organizers of MLDS. Uh, looks like a very successful uh, conference. One of the good ones that I have uh, uh, I have attended. A lot of uh, enthusiastic young crowd in the audience. People were taking pictures. Uh, a lot of people approached me after my session and asked for the presentation to be emailed to them. So uh, it is a good experience to interact with people and talk to them and tell them about what is happening in this world today. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it.